Hi, I'm Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the Senator for Gaithersburg and Rockville. And welcome to this week's edition of a very, very special Kibitzing with Kagan. So some of you may know, if you've ever read my bio or seen my Facebook post, that I include the fact that I am a nationally ranked Scrabble player, or my Twitter bio says I'm a Scrabble fiend, both of which are true, but I am a piker when it comes to Scrabble, but I love it. With me today are four of the people who are leading North American Scrabble, and we have a lot to talk about. So Art Moore, John Chu, Josh Greenway, Judy Cole, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Cheryl. It's good to be here. So we have two countries and four different, five different locations represented today. And let's start by just super quickly, one or two sentences about your personal and professional background, but literally that. So um, John, why don't you start? Uh, I'm a mathematician, software developer, father, genealogist, gardener, I guess that'll do. Oh, and I help run the North American Scrabble Players Association. And a Canadian. And a Canadian, yeah. Okay, uh, Art? Uh, originally from New York, living in Orlando. Um, I'm a computer network technician and freelancer. Excellent. Judy. Hi, I'm in Pennsylvania. I'm a retired software person and Scrabble is now my full-time job. Woo, for which you get paid just so much. <laughs> Josh Greenway. Um, I live in Toronto as well, and I work uh, for a live streaming uh, tech company uh, here in Toronto. Excellent. So I'd love to hear from each of you how you started playing Scrabble. Uh, how long ago? And did it take from the beginning or did you kind of ease into it? Uh, let's go in reverse order. Josh. I started playing Scrabble 15 years ago, uh, like many people around the board with some friends. Somebody started looking up two letter words and all of a sudden that just opened the floodgates uh, for improvement for everyone. And uh, that's how I found uh, the book Word Freak and the rest is history. Here I am. Love it. Judy? Um, I played Scrabble casually all my life. During grad school, I had a friend, we played thousands of games together, but never in a club or tournament. And every year I meant to join and finally did in 2006. And since then, I've been probably one of the most frequent players, if not most successful players. <laughs> we all do our best. Art, how about you? Um, I don't remember a time in my life when I wasn't playing Scrabble. It was my mother's favorite game. So we played a lot of it. Um, it was uh, 15 years ago when I joined a club um, and became a director a year after that. And it's just been nonstop ever since. Fantastic. And John? It was just one of many board games that I played when I was growing up. And then in around 1990, I got kind of obsessive about playing it with a computer because I was living in France and I wanted to do something English language. But then I started playing the real game as, as we all know it in 1993 when I met this guy online who played Scrabble in a way that I'd never seen it played before with like weird two letter words and a few, a few bingos, a, a game and so on. And I, I could only beat him like one game in 10. And I thought I, there must be something wrong with one of us. And uh, it turned out he was a national champion named Adam Logan. And when we started talking about where, where we were, he said, oh, you should go to the Toronto Scrabble Club. Uh, they'll, you know, you, you'll, you'll enjoy meeting them. They'll enjoy meeting you. So Fantastic. Well, I will add my story here because my mother used to play with my godmother. Uh, and I just remember them being really pretty intense about it and having fun. And as a grown up, I dated a guy who, um, and we played a ton of Scrabble. And then there was a piece in the Washington Post about the Washington Scrabble Club on Tuesday nights. And so, uh, so I showed up one time and then got hooked and came in first place in my very first tournament because I was in the lowest division. And, uh, and then it went from there, but like Judy, uh, losing a lot more than I win, but still having a blast. Um, so what is it that you love about Scrabble? Take out the, uh, you know, the history of it. So what is it today that drives you to play? Uh, Judy? Um, I think it's the fact that at this age, I'm learning something new each time. And, you know, and it's sort of nice to learn a new skill and each game is different. 
And so I think that's what I like best. And then, of course, the people and the sort of social aspect of seeing people at tournaments and clubs. Right. John? I would put the people first. I think it's uh, a chance to connect with people in a different way. I, I like board games in general, but there's something about playing word games and Scrabble in particular that brings a, a quirky part of most of my friends that I really, really enjoy. <laughs> Josh? Um, I'm going to say the same thing. Scrabble came along at a uh, kind of an inflection point in my life where maybe I wasn't uh, connected to as many people as I wanted to be. And this game really uh, brought something out in me that has kind of not stopped. And it's helped me in so many ways in my relationships, in my career, all that kind of stuff. And this community in particular, I found a place here um, that's been really important to me. And it's it's something that I plan to give back to uh, forever. And, and you all do. Art, how about you? You know, there's that moment when you're sitting across the board, right? right before the game starts and, and the board is empty and the bag is full and, and you're sticking your hands in that bag and you just don't know what's going to happen over the next, you know, 30 minutes. And it's, it's, it's that moment and what comes from that moment that just, I can't get enough of. I love that actually. That's cool. Um, so let's, let's talk about COVID because we've all continued to play this game that we love through COVID. Um, Judy, you've really led so many tournaments. Why don't each of you or any of you who want to share um, what Scrabble during, um, during the pandemic has been like, how you've, what the limitations have been and what the opportunities have been. Judy, you want to start? Yep, when COVID first uh, broke out, we were planning to have an informal sort of um, tournament among friends. And I said, well, maybe we could do it online. And since then I've run over 200 virtual tournaments twice a week. I still get 20 to 25 to 30 players from all over the country. And so, including Cheryl Yay. as one of my regulars. And so it's not the same as playing live, but I have to say the first time we met, I mean, I almost cried. It was just so happy to see people. We had a Zoom call to sort of socialize and do that. So I think that was, you know, that's, again, a substitute, but not quite the same as playing live. So I suspect most of us play both on Scrabble Go, on Woogles, on talk about what, uh, what you have found as a worthy substitute. Um, Art, do you have one that you like? Um, uh, when our club meets online, and we don't as much anymore because we are face to face now, but Google's uh, turned out to be the place that, that we all liked, um, and, you know, special, special uh, catered to uh, the unique needs of a, of a Scrabble club. Um, and then, you know, face to face, there's, there's nothing, nothing that you can, you can't replicate that online, but Oogles was the best we could do, and, and we enjoyed it. We, we really did. Uh, my co-director uh, put a lot of legwork into setting things up and keeping the stats. So, um, Tim, if you're watching, thanks. We love <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah, we all tried ISC for a while, but Woogles is so much better. Uh, John, what's your preference? Um, I enjoy playing uh, on Scrabble Go, but and on Moogles, but, but in different ways. Every morning I, I open up Scrabble Go before I'm fully awake and I <laughs> ma make one turn, I, I advance each game by one play. And yes. you know, it's a good way of getting your brain going in the morning, but it's not nothing at all, uh, it has not, none of the social aspect of it that, that going to the club does. So I really look forward to Wednesday nights when the Toronto club meets online. And that's as close as you can get to the club experience without actually being together in one place. And I'm, yeah. I, I really do miss seeing people in person and actually being able to handle the tiles and, and you know, just see people's facial expressions better and so on. That's yeah. why I'm looking forward to, uh, to getting together with everybody in Baltimore this summer. Yes, and we are totally going to talk about that. Josh, you hosted one of the early in real life uh, get together tournaments uh, in Albany. And why don't you talk about nervousness or and what your plans was, how, were, how successful they were? How did that go? How nervous were Absolutely. the players? Yeah. Yeah, so there was a lot of uh, confusion. We started bringing back what we call our hotel multi-days where 
up to 100 people would come together in a hotel in a very large plane room um, to play Scrabble. And uh, so in October of 2021 is when we hosted our uh, first large tournament like that. And really what I think the key to our success was, was our communication strategy, mm -hmm. making sure everyone understood what the expectations were, what the rules were gonna be. We, uh, we got through that tournament, um, everybody was masked, everybody was uh, at least double vaccinated. And um, at the end of it, we put out a survey and everybody seemed to be feeling okay. And we've run a number of tournaments since then. And again, it's that communication plan that has been the key to success. Absolutely. Yeah, it was great. Um, so before we pivot to Baltimore, some of the people watching this are not gonna be Scrabble fiends like we are. So I'd like to hear from each of you, what's a great tip for someone who wants to sort of maybe stick their big toe in the water a little bit more and get into Scrabble? Um, John, why don't you kick us off? For someone who is just starting to play the game, um, you have to recognize that people who play it competitively play it competitively so <laughs> you have to set aside your ideas if you want to enjoy the competitive experience you have to set aside your ideas about making the cool plays or the you know try to find that 10 letter word or whatever uh and just sort of buckle down and learn your two letter words with an x j q z or z and, right yeah yep judy i think based on something that happened to me today my biggest piece of advice would be once you think you're ready to make your move look again yep. you know i started to make a play today for maybe 20 30 points and i said hey that looks pretty good i looked again and again and again and ended up with a play for 185 points. dang so, congratulations all right you know so think carefully so bob lynn who uh was an early mentor when i was just starting lives in the, in my area in maryland his and i quote him all the time find your best play and then find a better one which is just brilliant and there are times exactly when i hear bob speaking in my mind i was like oh yeah i can do better than this all right how about you um you, you get 25 minutes on your clock when you play competitively and you don't get any bonus for all the minutes you have left over right so take your time um get get used to playing with the clock and get relaxed don't be intimidated by it and then take your time uh, to find that play. Um, watch what your opponent plays and prepare to react to that. Even if you have your best play, your opponent might give you something that makes your best play just a little bit better, so. Absolutely. Josh? What I would say is that if, if people are interested in checking out Scrabble, number one, they can find, um, they can find a Scrabble club, maybe find a friend, uh, take a look at what's going on in person. That kind of early experience can be a ton of fun. And the other thing that I wanted to say, um, over the last couple of years, we've really seen an explosion online, not only in Scrabble play, but in Scrabble content. So if you're someone who's a fan of YouTube or Twitch, I would go there and I would search for Scrabble. And what you will find is there are lots of people who are engaging. You're going to learn more stuff there. You're going to get more comfortable so that when you hit, when you do get in person and maybe you have a, a tough game, you got a little more perspective and you're going to have a little more fun. Love it. And I specifically uh, will give a shout out to Will Anderson, whose videos are excellent. And he does a letter by letter profile of how to, how to use a C or an M or a T. And it's, yeah, they're awesome. So Baltimore, the national championships are gonna be hosted here. Um, so who wants to kick off talking about what that is and what some of the exciting aspects are gonna be? All right, why don't you start off? I'll, I'll dive into that, you yeah. bet. Um, you know, it was a few years back when I was approached by a woman who said, hey, I can probably get you into Baltimore. And, and uh, Senator, we are, we are quite appreciative. We're so looking forward to this. Um, uh, we have people come from around the world um, and, of course, from across the country. Um, yes, this is our, our competition, but this, this, is, this is a get-together like we haven't had before because so many of us are, are, are missing, as John and, and, and the elders have said, the social aspect. 
Um, there's gonna be a whole lot of hugging going on, <laughs> but um, we're we're also going to uh, get the tiles out. Um, gosh, 31 games. Um, we have a best of five to decide the champion. Um, it, it it's 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 five days of of just incredible incredible fun. Um, <laughs> I don't play, and and I'm I don't play because I can't. I I'm I'm too busy working. But it's just so much fun to see everyone together. Um, and and that's why people ask me, don't you want to play? Well, of course I do. But I. I really enjoy seeing everyone get together. It's, 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 it's great. That's great. So Judy, you are, your, your virtual backdrop is in front of a very cool logo. Why don't you talk about what's going to be special about being in Baltimore this year? Well, I think it's the first time in a long time that we've been on the East Coast and in a major city. And we're literally going to be steps away from the Orioles ballpark. Mm -hmm. They will be in town the whole time that we are there. So people can play seven games of Scrabble and go to the ballpark. <laughs> but in addition, the National Aquarium, the American Visionary Museum, the Science Museum are all within walking distance and a whole waterfront full of restaurants for people to go out and eat and have fun. One thing new that we're doing this year at our own event is we're having a welcome dinner. And so far, hey, we you have, broke up, Judy. You're ha oh, having a what? We're having a welcome dinner. Yes. And already we have over 100 people signed up for that. And so I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to have a presentation by Peter Sokolowski and editor Miriam Webster about the history of the dictionary. We're going to present our annual rewards. So be a lot of fun. And I personally am looking forward to the trivia competition on Saturday night, which is hotly contested among the players. Now, we also have a special guest. Is it a surprise that we don't want to mention, or do we give him a shout out? Perhaps we could mention him to the members of this broadcast. Are you talking about a certain avian friend? I am talking about, go for it. The Oriole bird will be making an appearance on Wednesday. <laughs> as we kick off the award ceremony. So he'll be there to have fun with us and take pictures. And I think we're gonna have a couple other surprises as well. It's gonna be, it's gonna be really fun. Now, Josh, you do um, a lot of social media and interviews and, and all that. Why don't you talk about how you're gonna be engaging folks uh, both in the Scrabble community and broadly? Absolutely. So when it comes to this particular event, um, the thing is, there are a lot of Scrabble tournaments uh, these days, but there are none quite like this one. This is an event that goes all the way back to 1978. There have been incredible moments um, at, uh, at this event. Some of our greatest players, uh, Adam Logan previously mentioned winning at the age of 21, Joe Edley winning three of these in three different decades. Nigel Richards winning four in a row. We, we've had some incredible stories come out of this event. So what we're going to try to do is um, we're going to live stream the entire event. That's the that's the plan for right now. And um, we're really, if, if people have watched this tournament before, we're going to just try to bring our, you know, photography, our live streaming, our social media coverage to the next level to deliver those stories and really... Uh, let people know what the experience is like and, and invite people uh, into Scrabble. That's great. Now, John, some people who are not involved in this world might think, oh my God, I come in for the first time and I'm a living room player and I'm playing a national champion. Why don't you talk about the different divisions and the ways people can kind of ease into it? Yeah, so you're not going to be playing a national champion. Uh, you play according to your tournament rating, which is like a chess style rating. We're playing four different divisions uh, in one lexicon and two in the other. And so you'll be playing people uh, of your appropriate level. Um, as a warm up event, we have an early bird that's just four rounds on the Friday. So you can, if you've never played before, we don't really encourage you to dive right into the 31 game <laughs> tournament, but certainly playing for uh, for four hours on a Friday afternoon, we'll let you know whether or not you've, you've got what it takes. Yes. Um, but also just remember that, you know, we're only playing for seven hours a day and people do often complain. Only, like, only. <laughs> but we, we leave, 
you know, we leave a two hour lunch gap and, and break early enough in the evening that, that people can just hang out and have fun. And, you know, not everyone's going to win their division and everyone else is there for, for everything else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk about word games a little broadly. Uh, one of my staff wanted to know whether you guys played Wordle and whether you did crossword puzzles. Uh, Josh, do you? Yeah, I think I was with Wordle for uh, maybe a month or two, but uh, that's about it. I do on Scrabble Go. I'll, I'll be on there uh, sometimes for sure. Okay. All right. Uh, Wordle, my streak is 132. Um, I, 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 I'm not much of a crossword person myself, but, um, Wordle, Jumble, stuff like that. Yeah. I've, I've always, I've always been keen on those. John, do you? Uh, I started playing Wordle until I discovered that the, uh, the source, it was open source and I could find the list of words online and just know what the words were going to be in future. It took oh. a lot out of it for me, but I do, I've got a, a daily streak of over five years for the New York Times crossword. That's a big part of my daily routine. Nice. Judy, what about you? Well, I play Wordle every day at midnight as soon as it turns around and I play the spelling bee. Okay. I've been attending the um, American Crossword Puzzle Tournament for close to 40 years. And in fact, one of the reasons I transitioned or started to play tournament Scrabble was that I realized there's one crossword puzzle tournament a year, but I could play Scrabble every weekend, so. Yes. Um, I have so many questions, but I, but I wanna start to wrap this up. Um, I wanna talk about diversifying and extending, expanding our Scrabble world. Um, let's talk about school Scrabble for a second to get young people engaged. So Josh and Judy were down in DC for that at a very cool uh, Planet Word Museum. And if you haven't been there, it's down at 13th and K. And I totally recommend going, bringing your kids, bringing the whole family. It's really awesome. So um, Judy, do you want to start us on that? School Scrabble? Yeah, School Scrabble is a great way that many you know, young people get introduced to Scrabble. And some of our, you know, champions started there. Um, the championship in Washington, D.C. drew over about 80 kids, I think, from across the country and one or two from Canada and, uh, there. And it was a wonderful event. I work with a program in Philadelphia as a volunteer that has a, over a thousand kids playing Scrabble in the schools. Okay. And so we brought 30 of them down there for that event. Amazing. Josh, do you want to add anything? Well, I, I just want to say it, it was a wonderful event. As you said, Planet Word was the um, host location. That, that's an incredible place. Whether you're a Scrabble player or not, definitely recommend a visit. And we did a, we did a great live stream out of there. And uh, I believe that's available on uh, probably YouTube and Twitch if you search around for Scrabble. Excellent. Um, and what about more women and more people of color? What are, is there any effort and uh, to try to do that? John, one of the things that I've noticed all the time is how few women are in the top ranks. What are we doing about that? Uh, to, um, I, I hesitate to open up, a, uh, to reopen a really thorny subject from a couple of years ago. Uh, but we made a decision to be more welcoming to the, to all of our players by removing a bunch of words from our lexicon that were really I was going there expensive to yes. to people that are otherwise held in high esteem within our community, and uh, we lost a few players as a result of that. But I think it's going to be a net gain and. Uh, I think uh, we got more positive feedback from that in the long run than negative feedback. So, so John, you kind of captained that area, but um, that effort. Um, Art, do you want to talk about that? Do you want to weigh in here on this before we go deeper and explain what we're talking about in terms of the Well, well it, it was, um, it was a, an interesting uh, conversation uh, across, and, and we had a lot of folks who didn't understand why this was necessary and other folks who... Um, it was important to them that that remove some of these words. So, you know, we, we want to be a welcoming community, that's for sure. Um, 
everyone is, you know, the doors are open, come in and play and, and, and please enjoy your time and don't, don't feel uncomfortable about something you've heard or definitely something you've seen across the board. That's not what we want. So for non-Scrabble players, the conversation started around the N word and there was a lot of consensus about that, but it expanded to 200 and how many words, John? 59. 280 words, words, but yeah. Yeah. So, so word like, words like les or Jew or, you know, they are now no longer legal and can be challenged off the board. So, um, so Judy, if somebody is interested in, uh, in competing in Baltimore and uh, uh, whether it's just the early bird or for the whole five days, 31 matches, uh, where would they sign up? Where would they learn more? They can come to our website, which is scrabbleplayers.org. And there's some big buttons on the front page to find out more about the event or to register for the event. Great. Um, so normally I close with a fast five, but I think with four of you, I think that would take a really long time. So uh, let me just ask each of you to recall one word that you played that was just either whether it was the word or the or the outcome, how it switched. And so Judy, I don't know if you want to kick us off with your word today or if uh, uh, if you've got a word that you remember. Okay. Um, I'll say one, you can play words that aren't words. And to a word that I've played twice that has gotten accepted is God sent, D-O-D-S-E-N-T. The first mm -hmm. time I didn't know, the second time I did know. But the word I played today was naivetes, N-A-I-V-E-T-E-S. And I started with vainest yeah. and said, oh, I can move that over and get more points on the triple line. And then I said, no, it'll be more points if I play naivest. And then I realized I had an ET on my rack and so I could play naivete for 185 points. Amazing, amazing. Art, do you remember one of yours? Um, I started playing in my Scrabble Club in January 2007. The last session of the year, second game of the evening, um, I played Overwind, O-V-E-R-W-I-N-D, for 203 points, uh, a 600-point game, the highest game anyone had um, accomplished that year at the club. So nice. that'll be the one that sticks. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Josh, how about you? I always like it when you can start a game, the board's completely open, and you can just Throw bingo down. So one that I would remember is like playing something like jigsaws right out of the bag. Throw that J on the double letter, hit the double word. You're up 100 and, you know, you're on a roll <laughs> from there. Excellent. John, how about you? Uh, many years ago, I played a triple-triple for 266 points. It was the word junkiest. I deeply regret having made that play because it caused my opponent to quit playing Scrabble forever. <laughs> oh, no. That's terrible. I figured no, no word is worth a human life. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I'm going to add two. One, I was on a park bench in Paris and I pay, played a triple triple, uh, which for those who don't know, that's times nine plus 50. It's a it's a big score uh, for 200. And I got to count it again. It's like 212 points or something. And I played sequel. Uh, in Paris, and I and I had no one to share it with. It was very frustrating. And then uh, the other one was uh, in Reno at the tournament, and I was uh, I was playing a, one of the talented young people, and he was ahead, 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 and the game was almost over. And uh, and I was able, and he wasn't watching this bingo lane. He's playing over here, and I bingo out for a come from behind win with Arborist. And he didn't see it coming and I won the match. So I still lost most of my matches, but that was a win and that was that was fun. So um, thank you all. This has been a great deal of fun. Um, I'm psyched to see you all in Baltimore and so many of our friends. And uh, so again, scrabbleplayers.org to learn more, to sign up either for the whole 31 matches or for the for the early bird. There's also uh, isn't there a late bird also? Late bird. Yeah, Judy? Yep. Okay, also, John, yes. why don't you talk about that? Who's got oh, the late bird? Go ahead. That's just, it's just four, four games that you can play while we're cleaning up the mess from the main event <laughs> <laughs> so on a Thursday. Um, if you want to catch your opponents at their, at probably their weakest after they've been exhausted by playing for, for a whole week, that would be the time to see some, uh, some uh, to get some last minute action at a better event. 
Excellent. All right. Well, thank you all for your time. Very fun to kibitz with you. And I look forward to seeing you again in Baltimore uh, very soon. Stay well. Thanks so much, Cheryl. Bye, Cheryl.